Welcome to another 2023 recap. We take a look at the events of the year that is coming to an end. A year with a lot of information about elections, and here we come in on it. I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Be welcome. We begin with Ecuador. The people of that country went to the polls last October 15th for the runoff election where they chose the new presidential binomial. 13.4 million Ecuadorians were called to the polls in an electoral process that was marred by violence after the assassination of the Concertation Movement Party candidate Fernando Villavicencio which worsened the political and social crisis in the country. A first round of elections took place under this scenario, where eight presidential candidates face each other, including the substitute of Fernando Villavicencio. Despite tensions and a climate of insecurity, the elections were held with a turnout of over 82% of the electoral roll. Luisa González, candidate for the Citizens' Revolution Movement Party, and Daniel Novoa of the National Democratic Action Party were elected to face each other in a runoff. As a result, right-winger Daniel Novoa won by three percentage points over the candidate of the Citizens' Revolution Movement, Luisa González. And also I want to thank all those people who have been part of a new, young, improbable political project whose aim was to give a smile back to the country, to give peace back to the country. On her Luisa part, Luisa González congratulated and acknowledged the results of President-elect Daniel Novoa. To the candidate, now president-elect Daniel Novoa, our most sincere congratulations because it is democracy. We have never called to set fire to a city, and we have never gone out shouting fraud. During this runoff, more than 53,000 police officers and some 43,000 members of the armed forces were deployed throughout the Ecuador to protect the security of voters. On November 23rd of this year, Daniel Novo assumed the presidency of Ecuador, being the youngest elected by popular vote. The inauguration was held in the city of Quito and was attended by personalities and presidents of the region to present his government proposal. The country needs employment, and to generate them, we will send urgent reforms to the assembly. The reforms must be dealt with responsibility, and by thinking of the country first. One of the challenges that this new government will have to face is that Novoa will have about 18 months to strengthen the path of this nation because, according to statistics, Ecuador could become the most violent country in the region. Let's review some facts about the new president of Ecuador. Daniel Loboa Asin is a 35-year-old businessman and politician from Guayaquil, the youngest president in the history of the country. He was a legislator during the period 2021 and 2023. He will complete the presidential term of Guillermo Lasso in the period 2023-2025 after the latter declared cross death by dissolving Congress and calling for early elections. Argentina also held an important electoral process that began with a simultaneous and mandatory open primaries, also called PASO, and ended in a runoff election in which the ultra-right wing, Javier Milei, was elected as the new president of the country for the 2023-2027 term. 
About 36 million Argentines were summoned to vote after the elections to choose their new president in the first round of the elections. In that instance, the polls were contested by Sergio Massa of the Union for the Homeland Party, Javier Milei of Freedom Advances, Patricia Bullrich of Together for Change, Miriam Bregman of Workers Left Front, and Juan Scaretti of the coalition We Do for Our Country. The turnout of this first round was 77 percent, and the Minister of Economy, Sergio Massa, was the most voted candidate, reaching 36.7 percent of the popular support, while Javier Milei advanced to the runoff with 29.9 percent of the votes. After the results were known, and despite Millet's condemnation of what he called the political caste, he made an alliance with the former right-wing candidate Patricia Bullrich and the former president Mauricio Macri, which would be decisive for the upcoming electoral process. Prior to the ballot, Sergio Massa and Javier Millet went head-to-head -head in a televised debate. I want to reiterate. Are you going to dollarize the economy or not? Sí, vamos a dolarizar la economía. Yes, vamos a we are going to dollarize the economy. Vamos a tener we are going to close the central bank. We are going to have to put an end to the cancer of inflation. During the runoff, which took place on November 19, over 76% of the electoral roll voted after a long day the Javier Milei Victoria Villaduel binomial was elected with 55.6% of the votes against the binomial formed by Sergio Massa and Agustin Rossi, who obtained 44.3% of the votes. After the results were known, Milei addressed the Argentine citizens I also want to tell you that we are committed to democracy, free trade and peace. We will work hand in hand with all the nations of the world to help build a better world. This is historic night, not because of us, but because one way of doing politics is over and another begins. For his part, the now former presidential candidate Sergio Massa acknowledged his rival's victory while thanking those who entrusted him with their vote. While citizens expressed their concern about the economic proposals put forward by Javier Milei. I want to say, obviously, the results are not what we expected, and I have spoken to Javier Millet to congratulate him and wish him the best because he is the president that the majority of Argentines have elected for the next four years. Javier Millet assumed the presidency of Argentina on December 10, 2023, for a four year term in which he will seek to reduce the state to its minimum expression with controversial measures such as dollarization, the elimination of the central bank, the privatization of public companies, and the legalization of gun ownership. Let's learn about President Javier Milei. He was born in the city of Buenos Aires and is a 52-year-old economist. After a frequent presence in the television media, he was elected as deputy speaker in the year 2021. For his government plan, Millet has proposed to dollarize the economy, privatize public works, legalize the possession of weapons, and the free sale of organs, besides closing the central bank and implementing a system of vouchers for the education system. Despite denying what he calls the political caste, he came to power after aligning himself with former President Mauricio Macri, and officials of his political spectrum, such as Patricia Bullrich and Luis Caputo, are part of the new government. Thousands of Guatemalans also went to the polls this year to elect their new president and vice president. The electoral process was defined in a runoff. The candidate chosen to represent the seat movement party, Bernard Revel, won the victory in the runoff of the presidential elections held on August 20, where he faced the candidate of the National Unity of Hope Party, Sandra Torres. In the first round, Arevalo achieved the second place with 11.8% behind Torres, who obtained 15.7% of the votes. Today, Guatemalans have hope, and we are celebrating the return of the feeling of hope today to the streets of our country. During the runoff, Bernardo Revalo won against his opponent by obtaining 58% of the votes against 37.2% obtained by Torres in an election that registered 
45% of citizen participation with 55% abstention. After Arevalo's victory, the Attorney General of the Republic, Consuelo Porras, ordered the suspension of the Seed Movement Party for alleged anomalies in its creation process. The Supreme Electoral Court suspended the disqualification of the party in which the president-elect is militant, as its spokesman announced. The director of the Registry of Citizens is held in abeyance until the conclusion of the electoral process. The president-elect Bernardo Revolo described the attacks by the Attorney General's office as a coup d'état attempt to prevent him from taking office. After the candidate for the seat party obtained the majority of votes, the attacks began by the public prosecutor's office, whose officials raided the headquarters of the electoral tribunal. Today, Guatemala is suffering because our institutions are in crisis. Consuelo Porras' office does not seek justice. As has become clear, they confirm that they are willing to persecute innocent people for their opinions and political stances. As a result, thousands of Guatemalans have demonstrated against the Attorney General, demanding her immediate resignation for interfering in the electoral process and violating democracy. Amid the institutional crisis, Bernardo Revalo is expected to assume the presidency of Guatemala this coming January 14. But who is Bernardo Revalo? The new Guatemalan president-elect, Cesar Bernardo Revolo de Leon, is a politician, sociologist, and writer born in Uruguay. His father was Juan José Arevalo, former president of Guatemala between 1945 and 1951, who was exiled after Jacobo Arbenz coup d'etat in 1954. Arevalo, before being elected president, held several diplomatic positions. He was vice minister of foreign affairs in 1994 and ambassador of Guatemala to Spain in 1995. In 2015, he founded the progressive party Semilla to fight against corruption in the Central American country. Presidential elections were also held in Turkey, in which Recep Tayyip Erdogan was re-elected after winning on May 14th against his opponent Kemal Kılıç Daroglu in a runoff election with a very tight result of 52% versus 48%. In his first statements after his re-election, Erdogan celebrated his victory. We are not only the winners, Turkey is the winner, our nation with all its sector is the winner, our democracy is the winner, he said. Amid a complex context of ongoing conflicts in the Middle East, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan said he is committed to a new phase of prosperity in his nation and commented, it is our goal to contribute as much as possible to peace and prosperity in the world in the context of the crisis that everyone is experiencing. Recep Tayyip Erdogan is a member of the Justice and Development Party, supported by the Nationalist Movement Party, as well as other Islamist parties. This is his third consecutive term, and he has ruled the country since 2003, that is 20 years in the presidency of Turkey. The president was sworn in before parliament in Ankara on May 29th. We have a short break coming up, but we'll be right back. Stay with us. Turn to our special program Recap 2023 to review the electoral processes held during the year and their protagonists, their impact on politics and the world economy. Citizens of Cyprus, Sierra Leone, and Uzbekistan also call for elections. Presidential elections were held in Cyprus in February. In a runoff election, the candidate of the social democracy movement, Nikos Christodoulides, was the winner with 51.92% of the vote, ahead of his direct opponent, Andreas Mavrogiannis, who obtained 48.8% of the popular support. We are now in Central Asia. In Uzbekistan, a constitutional referendum was held. The president of this nation, Shavkat Mirziyoyev, with the aim of running for the third re-election, 
proposed to reform the articles of the Magna Carta that referred to the extension of the presidential term. The participation of the citizens was 84.51% in the popular referendum and the winner was the yes option with 90.61% against 9.39% for the no option. Let's see in South America. In Paraguay, presidential elections were held on April 30 of this year. It was the eighth electoral party since the departure of dictator Alfredo Stroessner in 1989. With 95% of votes counted, the candidate of the Colorado party, Santiago Peña, was elected and obtained 51.64%, while his main contender, Efraín Alegre, obtained 27.48%. We are now in South Asia. Elections were held in Singapore on September 1, 2023, with 17.40% of the votes. Tarman Shangmu Garatman won, leaving his other two contenders behind with a difference of more than 20 points. The president-elect took office of Singapore's first president 14 days after being elected by a majority vote. In Sierra Leone, Julius Maravio was re-elected president in the first round with 56.17% of the votes, while his direct opponent, Samura Kamara, obtained 41.16%. The results were made public two weeks after the elections were held. In Spain, general elections were also held to elect the president of the country. Let's see the information in pictures. After the municipal and regional elections held in May, presidential elections were held in which the candidate for the People's Party, Alberto Núñez Feijó, obtained the majority of votes. However, he failed to win enough support to be sworn in as president of Spain, having only 172 votes in favor, 177 against, and one no. The king commissioned Sánchez to form a government. Pedro Sánchez did manage to obtain the necessary votes in favor of the Spanish Parliament to be invested as president with 179 votes in favor, 171 against and zero abstentions. His investiture took place on November 16th amid a context of protest called by the far right who opposed the amnesty law proposed by President Pedro Sánchez and the Catalan independentists. In our effort to grow as a multi-platform, we cover the elections in our other platforms. In our official Instagram account at Telesor English, we provided a minute-by-minute -minute follow-up of Argentina's general elections. You can watch this and other materials of our multimedia in all platforms. We are on Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, because Telesur this year made the leap into the world of podcasts. Before we go, we share a music video titled Tierra Santa by the artists Trueno and Victor Heredia from Argentina. Enjoy it and see you in a future broadcast. La tierra, la sangre, los sueños, las ganas, el hambre, la luz en los ojos de mi santa madre. Hechos de barro, de rama, de viento, de hueche, de carne, el sol cae en mi brazo por la tarde. Si preguntan quién soy, soy mi tierra, curtida de gobierno, de tafa, de guerra. Soy el hornero mostrando la sala, la vida, la muerte, la pluma y la bala, la soledad del rico, el sueño del pobre. La verdad de que el gobierno no se esconde, las huellas perdidas, el cuándo y el dónde. Ninguna dictadura va a poder borrar mi nombre, porque al futuro vengo de tierra santa. Latinoamericano llora, canta. Tengo la sonrisa celeste y blanca, si subo la mirada, la luna se levanta. Yo voy al futuro, vengo de tierra santa. Latinoamericano llora, canta. Tengo una sonrisa celeste y blanca, si subo la mirada, la luna se levanta. Mi cicatriz es mi historia, mi fama, mi gloria, mi pena por panas desaparecido, memoria. Va por los guachos, carnales, puñetas, gurises, chapales, al mundo le tiembla el piso por la euforia. Busco la paz en Bolivia, las calles de Chile, me busco en invierno, el agua ardiente de Colombia. Vengo del barrio del tango y llego al meridiano para borrar con la mano la línea divisoria. Si preguntan quién soy, que llevo a donde voy. 
Soy de Tierra Santa, soy de donde nací, donde voy a morir, mi Tierra Santa. Si preguntan quién soy, si preguntan quién soy, que lleva a donde voy. Defender mi tierra, soy el salvador pacífico en la guerra, me voy a morir luchando. Estoy firme como un venezolano, soy Atacama, Guarani, Coyabad Tucano. Si quieren tirarme el país, lo levantamos. Los indios construimos los imperios con las manos. Voy al futuro, vengo con mis hermanos de diferentes padres, pero no nos separamos. Soy el fuego del Caribe y un guerrero peruano. Le doy gracias a Brasil por el aire que respiramos. A veces pierdo, a veces gano, pero no es en vano morirme por la tierra que amo. Y si los de afuera preguntan cómo me llamo, mi nombre es latino y mi apellido americano. Si preguntan quién soy, que llevo a donde voy, soy de tierra santa. Soy de donde nací, donde voy a morir, mi tierra santa. Si preguntan quién soy, si preguntan quién soy que llevo a donde voy. Cicatrices, mi historia, mi fama, mi gloria, mi pena por panas desaparecidos, memoria. <risa> 